In this segment of From Table to Altar and Back, we're welcoming you back into the heritage of the Polish family, which, well, really, most of it happens at table. And therefore, this table, which is one of the most uh, bountiful tables of the year, is the table of Easter, preceded, of course, by 40 days of Lent, which prepare us to receive that bounty, that love, that heritage, that which was most important to your grandmothers and grandfathers uh, who maybe came from another land. They brought it with them to us. And we have here Sofie Hodorovich Nab, who is author of many, many loving books on heritage. She has a, a gift for preciseness and detail, but also for context. And so today we're going to show you, well, you're going to do something with your hands, not on the keyboard, I guess. No, no, no. Today we're going to do um, what I consider a fun activity. Um, an important activity, uh, something that we can add to our Easter basket when we take it to be blessed on Holy Saturday. Uh, you know, one of the really important signs of Easter and the resurrection is uh, the Lamb of God. And so uh, we traditionally have uh, some kind of a butter lamb in uh, the Schwienzonka basket, in the basket to be blessed on, on Holy Saturday. And you know, um, there, there's a lot of different ways that I guess you could do this. You know, you can buy something ready-made, already a butter lamb that's just ready-made. I mean, they're in supermarkets all over the place, which is great. I love seeing that in American supermarkets, right? This is a sign of mainstreaming. Yes, yes, finally something is popular, you know, and, and it's, it's a lot of fun to see that. Um, the other thing people can do to make a butter lamb, if you have access to it, but I'm here to tell you that it's not necessary to have a mold. Um, these were bought in Zakopane in southern Poland, um, and, and they can work very well to make uh, a, a butter lamb. If and Googling them, you can also find them online. So. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that's another f uh, fun way to, to do something. But for myself, you know, I've always liked to do things with my hands. I've always liked to, you know, crochet, embroider, all of those things. So when my friend's mom showed us um, how she made a butter lamb, I was taken by storm. And... In the years since then, I've made them for myself, uh, for my Easter basket, but I've also, and I love this, to do this with kids. Now, you have to determine, you know, the kids that you're working with, you know, if they can handle it, um, you know, what age groups you think would be okay. Um, but I'm here to show you how to make a butter lamb with just a stick of butter, which is readily available. You don't have to order anything online or go to Poland to buy, but you know, you go to your supermarket and get yourself um, a stick of butter. And that's one of the best aspects of the Polish celebration. Most of everything you need is already at home. Correct. So Father, I am going to show people how to make a butter lamb using things that they're going to find um, in their own homes, or perhaps a few things that they're going to pick up because it's it's going to be Easter. It's the holidays. Yeah. It's the mm -hmm. holidays. Mm -hmm. So, some chocolate-covered eggs, um, some jelly beans um, that we're going to use to, to decorate around the butter lamb, uh, some curly-leafed parsley, and to actually do some of the the banner, uh, we, we're going to need some fabric. Um, ribbon, uh, about one and a half inches, a uh, real thin ribbon, and then uh, to make the cross we can do a couple of things. We can make it from a very thin ribbon um, that you can pick up at a craft store and um, these are cocktail stirrers. I mean people can use skewers. What you have around the house. What you have right. around the house. Um, we're going to need a couple of toothpicks and some cloves, whole cloves, and some thread. And, and I like to work with kids. 
Uh, I like to show them how they could do that. It's a great activity and it's a great time, a, a learning time too. When kids are busy with their hands, they're, they're talking and you can be talking and you can be sharing the story um, and, and tell you know the meaning behind it, the representation of the Lamb of God, you know how it will be take, taken to church uh, to be blessed and you know, and then it's going to be used in the morning for the Shvienzonka uh, breakfast, the, the morning breakfast. And don't you have a story about the first person to cut into the lamb? The whole story was kind of like, who's going to be the one that's going to shift into the right position at the right time with their knife and, and sacrifice the lamb, which means they're the first person who takes the butter for that. to butter their blessed bread. Okay. okay. So the, the kids were really into yeah, that. Yeah, and so those are the kinds of stories mm -hmm. that you want to tell and, and share w w with the children. So when I'm working with children, uh, I, I like to make a kit <laughs> for each child because, well, you know children, yours is bigger than mine, or I want that, well, you know, when am I going to get that? And you know, when you've got three or four kids, um, you just want to be prepared. You want it to be fun, not a time for people to start hollering. I didn't oh, what have What you're this. doing is basically taking the creases out of everything in a certain way. Right. It's ready. You don't have to go through the uh, very painstakingly sort of the difficult The kids parts. think they're important. They get their exactly. own kit. Oh, yeah. And, and that's 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 important. That that's really special for them. So I you know I buy these cheap little plastic plates. Uh, I have my ribbon um, to make their own butter lamb and it's a lot of fun for them because they want to make theirs special. They want to make theirs unique. Here I am. Right. Okay, a stick of butter. You sort of have to eye it and the kids can do this. Now you take one end and you know, your butter has to be sort of a certain consistency because if it's too hard, then you're really whacking at it and it's not a fun experience. Um, too soft and now it's mushing. Um, maybe I'll start it like this. Oh, here's the toothpicks, right? So everybody's not looking around. And I try and anchor it so that it's not sliding around on the... But this is very important because I want, every once in a while make a butter lamb and then if you don't get pieces that are sticking there together somehow... The head flops The off. head flops over, right. <laughs> yeah, so, that's yeah. very discouraging. Mm -hmm. um, so you, this is, the, this is the hardest part and you can see from what I have here is that you can see very rough shape of, of, the, uh, of the butter lamb. And now the thing to do, and you tell the kids, you know, is you start softening it up. And so you can, you know, start with the corners because, you know, they're... Smoothing off the edges, I see you Yeah, doing. yeah. yeah. And, and you want to start, let's see, well, here I go again. You know, to anchor it, otherwise it's sort of sliding around. Try and give them a neck. You take the used parts and just, for now, you know, you start off, you know, in a, a rough, rough softening up of the edges and taking it and putting it on top of his head. You know, and the kids can manage this, you know. It, of course, depending on the age group, uh, you know, you might have to, you know, go from one person to the next helping out, but some of the children just get so excited about it and, oh, want to make theirs so unique and, oh, can I do this? Oh, can I do that? And of course you want to encourage them to uh, express their, their creativity. I mean, you do want a lamb shape figure In the end. To mm -hmm. towards the end, but um, I'm, I'm always amazed by uh, how creative uh, kids can be and, um, you know, as you're, as you're talking and telling them stories about, you know, making it with your own brothers or sisters and um, then they'll ask questions and, 
um, oh, sometimes, you know, they'll want their picture taken <laughs> while you're, and you know what? It's all part of the uh, family experience, you know, of being there at the table, um, you know, making something that then that they can put inside their, their basket, um, or, you know, or the family basket, you know, if there's only going to be um, one. Well, they could be like, I select the nicest one or, or are they be in charge? You're going to be making the lamb this year or something. And, or even give them, you can give yours to your grandmother or something, all, all kinds of variations. On, a ab absolutely. On or, you know, they can make it for one for their neighbor mm -hmm. who, you know, um, or for a shut-in or somebody, an elderly person who might right. remember. I mean, there's just, I think, a limitless opportunities to uh, make it a, a fun thing. And uh, my back end here is uh, needs attention. Um, all out of a stick of butter. So. All out of a stick of butter. And, you, you know, me being Polish, I watch for the sales. If I know I'm going to do this with a group, you know, I wait for the butter to go on sale. And, you know, and if... Uh, <laughs> As my mother would say, roszczapa, if they make sort of a mess, well, that's okay. It's a stick of butter, and you know, you scrape it into a bowl and use it to make your cake or something else, you know. It's not the end of the world, you know, and you can always, um, you know, give them another stick to uh, butter if they want to make more than one. Now, I'm trying to shape his head. If you, if you look at him, you know, he looks to the side a little bit, the lamb. He doesn't look, if you have him going straight forward, he looks too much like a, like a dog, right? So, you, you know, he's a lamb. Okay. Then with a toothpick, see, just a few. Or you can use skewers. Now we we're talking about earlier using a rice press to make these curly things on the lamb right the soft wool right press, to mimic. pressing the uh, soft butter through through the ricer yeah and that, then take kind of take it off with a knife and laying it on yeah it's like uh, too much work you know and then if you are doing it with kids you know that's like oh just with another, kids yes yeah. that that mm -hmm. would be another now if you're really fancy and i've seen some very fancy ones you know i i, I enjoy peeking into other people's baskets when I take them into to church to be blessed, see what they have in there. That's a perspective I enjoy very much. Yeah, yeah. Same Not just sprinkling them, but like inspecting the baskets. Always making sure that there's horseradish in the basket, because some people forget that. So if you just keep going around in this swirly motion, you know, you're going to fluff up, so to speak, the butter. You know, just in a round. That's something the kids like to do and then you know it's usually cool still in you know April or March because if it's warm then you know this butter lamb starts uh, decomposing and melting so you want you know you, you really gotta keep them going at it not to play but to create something here with the, the work on the toothpick there is actually work looking quite woolly there. It's, it, it's starting to take on that lamb look. Yeah, uh, it, it will. And you know what? The next step is what really sort of makes makes you know now it's going to be a, a, a lamb. Now it's a bit nondescript, but it's woolly <laughs> for sure. So the next step is to take a little bit of butter. We can fix his coat up a little bit later on on the tip of a knife. And this knife works really well. Try and get a nice little bit of butter right on the tip here. And here's the thing that people have to remember. When they get that little bit of butter on the very pointed end, they've got to point the knife down not up because if you put it on up now he'll really look like a dog and you want him to be a lamb so point the knife down put it on the side of his head that's his front wow and we have you know I a wish, lamb's ear i wish my father was here because he's the one that said my nose looked like a dog Oh. And this is beautiful. Did you point your knife down? Well, yeah, if I used the knife or a toothpick the right way, I don't know. But this is perfect. 
Yeah, so uh, that's that's the, that's the thing. You're not making a doggy, <laughs> you're making a lamb. And so oh. you have to point the knife down. down. Now I want to make sure I get his ears in the right place here. Ta-da! Oh. See? You make it look so easy. Okay, so this is the best part. It getting, really is. Getting the ears on because then it really looks like it's starting to, to sh yeah, you can, you can, if it doesn't work right, if it's lopsided, you know what? Nothing terrible has happened. You just start all over again. And uh, the kids, when the ear finally gets on, you know, they're, they're very excited about oh, the ears. I got excited here. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, what you do with that toothpick and then uh, during the, the edge of the knife, it's really something. It's just that little touch. And then... You try and find two cloves, or, you know, um, if you like a big eyes, you can use juniper berries, or you can use allspice, you can use peppercorns. But then, you know, two of them, because sometimes the shadings are a little bit different on, on the pieces of clove. And we give them, oh, I don't want him to slide around. We give him eyes to see. See? Mm. Then we can continue fluffing up his wool, making him nice and curly. And you know, sometimes if it gets too soft, you can put him in the refrigerator for a little while. Until you know, he hardens up a little bit, and then you can start all over again. I want to make sure his head is woolly. I have to say, this part is a non-exact science, while making the ears is an exact science because you got to get that knife down. You got a point. And it really, really stands out wondrously. Uh, yeah, uh, celebrationally, because he's kind of got his ears sticking out like that, flopping, uh, but also makes a difference. Distinguishing factor between what a lamb looks like. Okay, we're going to put the finishing touches on him. And generally you can tell you want to cross over in the front, but you don't want it like hanging too, too long. So, you know, you've got to just cut a little bit. I've seen some people refer to this part almost like a priest stole or uh, the ribbon being a mark, the red ribbon being mark of Jesus' blood. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, there, and the sacrifice here is proclaimed because this is the lamb, sacrificed once and for all. So these are all symbolic, not just decorative. So there he is. Now, I think the single most important thing um, that tells us um, the importance of this lamb is the resurrection banner that we place um, on, on the lamb. First, I'm going to cut a piece of, I'm going to make the banner. I'm going to cut a piece of thread or yarn or whatever you think um, would be uh, suitable. Uh, whatever you have around the house that can act as a um, kind of a rope. Just make a make a knot here. Something that will hold it. Okay. Easy enough. So I have a little loop of thread or yarn. Take my red um, ribbon, fold it in half, fold it in half. And to get it to stay together, I'm sure they didn't have tacky glue in Poland, but probably some sort of horse glue or 
made glue out of potatoes or something well, equally flour. clever, but fortunately... I remember my mother just said, no glue in the house, take some flour and water and you got glue. Oh, and make a paste. Right. Okay, yeah. Glue the two sides together. And the, the... I like the tacky glue. We can talk about flour, but you know what? Get kids and flour together and... Uh, well, Mama has to be in charge of the flour. We make a, an incision to make it the horongefka, the banner. Oh, easy enough, don't worry about If you're using the, the, the tacky glue, it dries clear, so it's, it's still gonna look nice. It dries clear and quickly, and, and that's quickly. why it's good. Mm -hmm. So, now you can buy uh, at the stores these lovely little crosses, but you know what? You don't have to go to the craft store and buy that. You can make your own little cross out of thin ribbon, Again, just a tad of glue. And again, don't worry, it'll dry clear and you'll be happy with the results. Then another one, you can Okay, and so here we have the banner uh, that we made ourselves. Um, and, and surely you can find craft stores that will have a banner already all prepared and made for you around Easter time. But, you know, I think it's a lot more fun um, to make your own. There's a real feeling of, of accomplishment. Yeah. Now we're going to attach him the banner to our lamb with... Um, well, this is a cocktail stirrer. Um, try and find the, a, a, the, right, the right size. Well, sometimes they're too big. You can also use um, you can also use straws. You know that'd be a little bit bigger, but you have to cut a, if you're doing the banner, you have to cut a little notch on the top to put the... Boy, my eyesight isn't what it, okay, here we go. Here. All right, now I hope I don't cut anything off. I'm not supposed to. Oh, I can put it a little bit. What do we think? Very nice. Hmm. It could be a little bit higher, right? Well, I'm not going to do it here, but you know, you can put it wherever you want. You can glue it to the very top, um, and that would simplify things a lot, I think, with the young, younger children, uh, or you can just, uh, you know, hang it uh, from a piece of thread. Uh, the final portion of this, oh, my parsley here is, okay, wilting a little bit, but you know, some fresh curly parsley, uh, you know, the whole resurrection uh, theme is about new life, new birth, and that includes the earth. Uh, so when the lambs are let out in the springtime, it's for the new grass. So we're going to put our lamb on a bed of grass. Now, I use curly leaf parsley. Uh, certainly you could use almost any kind of greenery. This greenery here distinguishes, uh, in Polish tradition, uh, a traditional lamb because the lamb always has to have a lawn of some sort. Yes. Because the lamb walks through the grass. And so, and the grass is us mentioned here as a sign of new life. So all this comes together uh, as a table centerpiece for the family Easter meal. And all edible for that matter. Right, and you know, the when we had my nieces and nephews visiting and um, you know, 
can I, can, can I be the one that puts it on the table? Can, will, will my lamb be on the table? I go, absolutely, everybody's lamb is gonna be on the table. Did you see my lamb? Did you see my lamb? Mine's the prettiest. Of you course. Know, the, the kids, they just so, you know, enjoy. It goes back to the whole thing is that people are proud of their work. Whether you've made your sausage and you're going to share it with someone, you've baked a, a special a platzik or some type of a babka, you want everybody to enjoy it. it. Right. And in this case, the kids recognize and affirm them, all the work that they put into it. And, you know, of course, children are always looking for approval from, from adults, you know, so it's just one more opportunity to say, you know, you're very creative or, you know, you've really added something to our, our Easter table. And, um, and that's, that's something a lot of people miss, not just to have the ch a child celebrate, but be part of the preparations. Exactly. And then the person really feels committed in a, a little way, a larger way, and here in an artistic way. So here he is. Oh, and, right, because he's out for the first time, we're going to show him having a little bit of a snack. Look at that. Right, he has a little bit of grass he's in his Eating grass mouth. there, right. right? And this is the other fun part that, you know, you can give um, the kids their choice about how they would like to decorate the rest of the um, plate. And that's where jelly beans come in or chocolate covered or here in this one I use the, the, the pisanki that I... Um, traditional that, Polish painted Right, eggs. that mm -hmm. I bought in Poland. But you know what? It looks great too with some eggs. It looks great with some jelly beans depending on what the kids like. And if, it, if you have a couple lambs on the table, you're gonna have a different presentation on each. Yeah. That's beautiful. Isn't it cute? Beautifully done. Yeah, um, and, the, and the kids really enjoy putting it in their basket. I know that nowadays the tradition is for children to have their own particular basket that they take. And I think that's a wonderful way to teach them the tradition. You know, as they get older, then we'll include other things. We'll, we'll teach them the traditional basket that the adults take in with all of the symbolic foods and things. But it, it helps them uh, initiate them into taking a basket to church. And if they can take their own lamb, and show it to their friends who didn't do a lamb, well, then they are someone, someone really very special. So that, that's it. I hope that people will um, experiment. The adults can have just as much fun being with their kids around the table, creating something that they're going to share then on um, Easter uh, Sunday morning. Just neat. And I'm gonna hi just highlight here one of the uh, sim symbols of the Polish lamb is is a grass lawn or grassy mm -hmm. lawn here made of uh, parsley and the victory banner, the Paschal banner, which makes it a sign of the, of the resurrection right in the home, right in the home, not just in church, but right where we come and break bread with each other, just like Jesus did with his disciples, as a reminder that Christ is with us at our holiday celebrations. And that's one thing Poles know how to do very well, is to bring in very subtle ways the presence of God and something that's important to them. On the table, in the home. Well, thank you so much, Zoshka. Thanks for inviting me, Father. Wonderful it's always job fun here. with you. <laughs> always. Thank oh, you. It's enjoyable. It's enjoyable. And it's so wonderful that you could not only work wonders with words on the computer, but also with your hands and creativity. My pleasure. Thanks for passing on the tradition. My pleasure again.